we're back. We're back for the Friday. Whether you edition. like it or not. Whether you like it or not, we're back. We're glad that you're here. I'm excited as we get ready for a Sunday. Sunday, September 12th, the beginning of the sermon series. We've set it up for the first couple of days, but today we're actually going to talk about uh, the passage that we're both going to be uh, reading from and preaching from on Sunday. It's the first part of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. And uh, it goes something like this. After Jesus has been in this conversation with uh, fellow welcome sinners and eats with them, Jesus tells them a parable, it says. It says, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays, his on, lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. This is the word of God for us, uh, all God's people. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Steve, where do you think you're headed with that on Sunday? Any thoughts in preparation? I don't know if I'd want this shepherd to be watching my sheep. Well, yeah. I mean, it, 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 did you, it, if you notice in there, it's not only do, does he leave the 99, he leaves them in a specific place. He leaves them in the wilderness. It doesn't say, oh, he secured them in a safe pen or put them in the barn. It's this image that he just looks at the, the 99 sheep and they're in the wilderness. I mean, when I think about wilderness, I think about <laughs> wolves and tigers and lions and bears and um, why do you think Jesus does it this way because um, you know that original audience were intimately familiar with the uh, shepherd culture the world in which they lived they, they knew how this worked this would not make sense for an no. MBA would it no I mean if you think about it just from a uh, loss prevention formula you are putting in danger 99% of your known assets to go after 1%. And, and that that 1% is, is so fascinating to me. If you've ever had sheep, and I didn't grow up on a, on a sheep farm, but a cattle farm. And, and I do remember growing up on a cattle farm and, and my dad being able to drive back into the, to the pasture. And he could just survey and look hmm. for just a moment. And he'd go, oh, there's one missing. I would just, Dad, what do you mean? How can you possibly look at, at that number of cows, 75, 100 head of cattle, and you pick out one's missing? And so I, I think about how little sense it makes to be able to not only recognize it, but then to say, I am willing to set yeah. aside the safety of all the rest because I have such passion for finding that one. Yeah, most of us would just write off the lost one and put it down on our tax form and try to get a deduction for it. But th it tells us something about the very nature of God, that, that we matter, right? That God knows. Just like your dad, the only way your dad could do that is because he knew his flock, mm -hmm. right? He knew his herd. And not just a passing glance, not just a, oh, I've got some cows in the field that I may get around to seeing. Uh, having cattle meant your dad was out there day in and day out, and he knew every one of them. And this implies that God has, and, and that's that's certainly the connotation here. We shouldn't doubt this. Um, it does, Jesus tells us this story. I'm sure he adds in the back of his mind the 23rd Psalm. You know, the, the, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down right. in green pastures, right. which again would have been a very familiar setting a very familiar mm -hmm. pattern of, of being for these he, folks. He also knows that, you know, King David was, even though he had lived <laughs> 700 years prior, was still the principal figure in the heart of the Israeli people, of the Hebrew people, who is known as a shepherd king. And so all those connections get built in there, and, and it's a way of saying this is what God is like. God loves in such a radical way that he will not let anyone be lost. And so, Steve, what do you think it means when it begins to say that the sheep is ultimately found? 
and heaven rejoices over <laughs> that one right. sense of that one coming back. It, it doesn't discount the 99, no. but it says heaven is really grateful and rejoices and celebrates the fact that that one was found. I, I think it, it speaks to something that um, is very prevalent in the writing of Dallas Willard, who's been a very important writer for me over the years, that the, the gap between our reality and the heavenly reality isn't as far away as we may think. Mm. Uh, N.T. Wright talks about how heaven is close. Uh, I, I love one of the images N.T. Wright uses. He, he talks about how uh, the old-fashioned hospital rooms, and maybe you remember those where you shared a hospital room with someone and all that separated the beds was a sheet. Yeah. So that, that's kind of how we should think about the heavenly realm, is that we get hints and intimations of it. We don't see it clearly, sure, but it's close. It's not so far away. And, and it says, it's a way, I think, of Jesus saying that heaven and earth are connected. They, and they are connected principally in who Jesus is. And so what happens on earth has bearing on what happens in heaven. That's pretty significant. Uh, and that's played out in the book of Revelation, too, because uh, there's an image of, uh, the, of heaven rejoicing in there. There's also the image of the prayers of the saints being poured out as an offering for God. And that connection between the two is uh, you know, found in the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so as we, as we begin to think about the things that are lost, and maybe, maybe you would begin to think about the people in your life that are yeah. lost, we threw that word around a lot in the tradition that I grew up in. We always somehow prayed for the lost, and what, what does that mean? But now I think it takes on a much more personal, a much more, you know, man, we put a face on this person. Yeah. Who is that person, and, and how is God's desire and, for relationship lived out in the life of that person? And the reality that when the one is separated from the 99, um, it's at risk. And it's at risk to harm. That we were not meant to live solo. We're not meant to carry out, live out our life of faith all by ourselves. We're meant to do that in community. We are at our best in community, kind of like we talked about earlier this week, that doing this together helps us be better. Uh, well, being part of the Christian community is the only way we can truly be Christian because we have to have each other for accountability uh, and well-being. And this one that is lost, and notice it doesn't say how it got lost, doesn't say what decisions the sheep made. Right, that. it just says it, it was lost. And Jesus is saying that in the context of, to, back to those religious folks, this is why I'm with the sinners. This is why I'm with the tax collectors. This is why I talk to prostitutes. This is why I'm with all those people who are beneath you, because they're not beneath God. And God loves them and will throw a bigger party when one of them is restored than when he counts heads on who's already yeah, in the house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you can sense the passion that is in this man and in, in me as well for this message series. It's, it's going to be a blessing. I, I'm already sensing that. I'm already feeling that. I do hope maybe that you would think about sharing this idea with someone, inviting them, if they are maybe been lost from the flock for a little bit, invite them to come on back and join us. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Steve, uh, thanks, man. Right, thank you, and hopefully we'll see you Sunday. Hopefully you haven't uh, lost the keys to your car or lost the password to your computer so you can log in yeah. or be there in person. And remind uh, the folks at Huntersville, we're going to be outside. We're going to be outside September 12th. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be food afterwards, individually wrapped hammers, hot dogs, some games, some fun afterwards. It, it's going to be back outside in the place where we were last summer out behind the uh, preschool area. And we'll be on our... Um, schedule throughout the month of September with 8.15 in the sanctuary, 10.15 at the Arbor, and uh, concluding with 11.15 in the Family Life Center. Uh, as you are aware, at Denver we've been doing surveys about future service times. Uh, those will begin when we get to October. Uh, and by the time this podcast is done, hopefully we'll have some, be able to tell you uh, exactly what's going to happen in the month of, six, of October. But I just want to say thank you. I, I don't know if I've discussed this with you or not, but we've had a great feedback on our surveys and we're moving forward with
how to best organize and schedule the life of the church. See you at 8.30 inside at Huntersville on the 12th. See you outside at 10.30. May the Lord be with you. Thank you.